Our project is nanocrystalline dissensorized solar cells. My name is Mason Lambert, this is Caleb Cole, and this is Madison Slaughter. Um, the importance of our work is, so our work will be able to be used in uh, classroom settings. We will be able to help this, or use this to help uh, students uh, learn electricity a lot better. Uh, they can learn how electricity is created from the use of our solar cells because of the solar energy. And it can also be used in uh, poorer areas. They can use this as a very cheap way of creating electricity for themselves. Okay, our materials used. In order to create each cell, we use some sort of fruit. We started off using berries. Then we use our cathode and anode conductive glass slides, and we use a iodine electrolyte solution at the end. Um, this is our, this is one of our juices right here. It's a cabbage juice, and we actually have to clean the slides with the distilled water. We test it using a uh, light bulb because inside the regular lights do not give it as much electricity as the sun would, so the light bulb does that. And we use a multimeter to actually test the electricity. For a procedure, we pretty much follow the same procedure every time. It's just step-by-step -step instructions. The pictures are kind of in order of how we do it. So when we first start off, we take one anode and one cathode glass slide out, and we set them down on the table and we use a graphite pencil. We had one with our kit, but any graphite pencil will work. We've used different ones previously that hasn't changed anything. And on the cathode slide, the one with the white tape at the top, we just scribble with the pencil just in a like downward motion back and forth. And then after we get our juice ready, we go on the anode slide and we put a little bit of the juice on it, which you can see right here, it's just like a little bubble. And we let it sit for about five, six minutes, just however, depending. And then afterwards is when the distilled water comes in, we rinse it off, like we usually put it in a little cup and just dip it in and rinse it a little bit and then let it sit on a paper towel and dry. And after it's dried, we put both of them together with tape, just tape them together with the top one this way and the bottom one this way, just ends opposite of each other. And after it's taped and secured, we use our iodine electrolyte solution and place it at the top between both slides so it can get in between them. And this is just a picture of after the solution has been in between the slides and been spread around. And after that is when we test it. We usually don't use a phone to test it. It was just easier to get in one picture. But you put both sides of the alligator clamps on each one and then connect it to the multimeter, turn it on. And then we usually test it a minute before we turn the light on and then after just to see what a difference it makes from having fluorescent light to having a light right there on it. The cells, how they work is actually just a similar, just kind of a little step-by-step -step process. The dye is a photoactive material of the solar cells and it produces electricity once it's sensitized by light which is where the name comes from dye sensitized because the light sensitizes the dye and that's what kind of starts the whole process and the way it does that is the dye catches the photons of incoming light sunlight artificial light anything like that and it uses the energy to excite the electrons and they behave like how chlorophyll is in photosynthesis it's a very similar process after that, the dye injects the electrons into the titanium dioxide, which is on one of the slides that we put the juice on. There's a slight coating of titanium dioxide on that. And after the electron is conducted away by, nano, by the titanium dioxide, a chemical electrolyte in the cell is, closes the circuit so that the electrons are returned back to the dye. So basically, it starts, it comes through, goes all the way through, and then whenever it's closed back off, it goes back through, up to here. So it just kind of goes in a big circle. Okay, this is our data. We started off using blueberries and it was the worst all around. It gave us the lowest voltage. Then we tried raspberries and it worked good. Then we tried blackberries and it had the biggest jump in voltage and was the best out of all the berries. After that, we tried red cabbage, and it worked the best and had the most voltage all around. Conclusion and future plans. So we plan to add more cells, like one day we'll get up to 10 cells and hopefully power something bigger. 
testing different juices. We want to test different berries like black raspberries, but we also want to test things that aren't berries like eggplants. Uh, we want to try to power smaller items. So like charging a phone or powering a light bulb and advancing on the technology in school environments. So this could be like for charging Chromebooks. For acknowledgements, acknowledgements we wanted to thank our teacher, uh, Dr. Harris Chandran, for giving us the opportunity to do this project to begin with. And of course, Belfry High School, because this is where we conduct most of the project at. This is where we started. This is where we put it together every time. And a big thanks to KVEC because the grant money that we receive from them is actually how we're able to do any of the projects that we do at all because they provide a lot of the materials for it. And the ICE Institute for Chemical Education is where we actually got the kit from that provided like the specific like the slides and the solution and the pencils and all the things that we actually use when we did it. So a huge thanks to all of them for making this possible. We are adding on to our project with the awards that we have uh, gotten in the past month or so from the competitions that we have attended and our third group in Mary is not here today. In the last month, we've attended the regional and state science and engineering fair competitions. And from the state competition, we got US Agency for International Development Award and ASM Material Education Foundation Award. And in our regional fair, we won first place in our category overall. And uh, that's Geography, Cultivating Empathy for the Earth Award. And we got second place, Best of Fair Award, which was just Best of Fair for the entire competition for all the categories in the high school.